What I was saying is I have good news because very recently I found my favorite Christmas toy of 2023. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> I brought him with me this morning. I don't know if you can see him all the way in the back. Maybe I'll walk up, like, like we walk babies up and down for baptism, maybe I'll show you my plush Grinch toy, my mechanical, wait, don't do it yet, my mechanical Grinch uh, toy. It does something very special, at least special to me. Now, I know Grinch toys are a dime a dozen, and he's been around for quite some time. This one cost me 18 bucks, and that was with the $2 uh, off the CVS coupon, you know, the one you have to <laughs> scroll down uh, 15 coupons to find the one that works for you. I thought it worth every penny, and I'm going to share him with you in just a second. I like this so much that I went back to the pharmacy to get it after seeing it earlier in the week. I just picked it up on Friday. It was the last one they had. I was destined to have it. <laughs> Here's what it does. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. You can sing along if you want. <laughs> Christmas 2023. 20, in case you didn't see it, he holds a trombone in his hands. It's not just that he's holding the trombone, but while he plays the trombone, it actually move, he actually moves the slide. That's what makes it uh, uh, that much more unique. And he, and he plays the theme song. Uh, and you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You all know that one, right? Priceless toy. Only $18 at your local... Well, you can't get any more because I got the last one. Sorry. <laughs> The whole family appreciates this toy, even Molly does, the dog, who barks at it continuously until it stops. <laughs> now, you might be saying to yourself, okay, <laughs> it's just a toy, Andy, uh, but it's much more than that to me. Some of you know that I am a non-committed trombone player, right? I went to college as a singer, but I liked tuba and trombone so much that I actually switched my emphasis from voice uh, to, uh, to, the, to those instruments. And then I continued to play both of those while I was in the Marine Corps. So that was my livelihood for four years. I loved the sound of each of those instruments. So that made this toy personally interesting to me. I also like the Grinch. I especially like the theme song because whether you want to admit it or not, we all have a little bit of a mean streak. No? Oh. I know a couple people who don't, but most of us do. <laughs> but you put all those sounds together, the sights, we, you know, we talked about Christmas sights last week, but you put that together with the sounds that this toy makes, you come up with a must-have impulse Christmas buy from CVS. Last week, Pastor Nancy introduced you to our Advent sermon series, Experiencing Christmas, Christ in the Sights and Sounds of Advent by Matt Rawl. Our focus is on how our five senses can be signs for us that point us to the coming of Christ and the gift of God with us. Remember what we talked about last week? Which sense? Okay, you all passed your quiz for this week. Good job. Guess what we're considering today? Hearing. Hearing, right. Our sense of sight might take up a lot of our brain, but consider how powerful is our sense of hearing as well. The voice of someone we love. If we're quiet enough and lucky enough to hear it, the sound of snow falling, snow on snow, you recall that sound? 
the snap, crackle, and pop that comes from either eating Rice Krispies or a warm fire. The sound of surf or wind through the trees or the rain on the roof. I thought we might hear this morning, but it's going to wait. Your favorite Christmas carol or song that plays on the radio on your way to work. The purr of a happy cat. Another of my favorite sounds is when Molly the dog half howls and half barks because she's excited to see someone in the family. How about hearing the spoken word of God? How about every single line from the movie Elf? <laughs> Remember, it's not just what you say, but how you say it, because that's what people really hear that makes a huge difference. Sounds make a huge impact on how we perceive the world around us. What are your favorite sounds? I'm hoping you'll recall some of those today and pay attention to them this week. Have you ever thought of the sounds God likes to hear? He loves to hear your voice in prayer and especially in praise. We'll get back to that, but let me ask you a question. Do you hear what I hear this morning? As you have heard Isaiah 42 read to you this morning by Sue, do you hear what God is saying to us in the promise of those first seven verses? They are a litany of truths about Jesus in expectation of his first coming at Christmas and in anticipation of his return. Jesus is God's chosen servant. He's pleasing to God. He will bring justice and hope to all people. Because God is who he is, creator of everything, the one who gives life and breath to all, he will give Jesus as the mediator of the covenant between God and the world. Jesus is our light and our salvation. How should we respond to this revelation of Jesus? Not just in Isaiah 42, but all over the Bible. Well, I think the number one thing on the list is by offering our praise. God loves to hear the praises of his people. Maybe our Advent and Christmas could be filled with that sound, not just at church, but at home and in our community, the sound of praise because God is with us. In particular, Isaiah suggests we should sing. In verses 10 through 12, he mentions singing five times. Music is a powerful conduit to communicate truth. When I was in late elementary school and middle school, before my voice changed from a boy's voice to a young man's, I sang in a group called the Singing Boys of Pennsylvania, which was a boys choir. That choir toured much of the US. I was even fortunate enough to travel to Japan twice. And I'm not bragging or anything, but I'm actually a renowned recording artist just behind Taylor Swift as I am literally on a record as a soprano soloist who sang the Et Exultabit, which is the song that Mary sang when she found out she was pregnant with Jesus. Suffice it to say, I learned quite a bit about faith-related things through singing a lot of sacred works while I was in that choir. It's kind of like learning. It's kind of like what we all do when we all sing a hymn and we sing it over and over again so that it reaches deeper parts of us every time. We hear it and we sing it. And we learn from it. We learn theology. We learn uh, who God is and who we are in relationship to him. We're going to practice that in just 
uh, a few minutes. And I'm saying that because that gives you uh, some lead time to pick out the first verse of your favorite Advent or Christmas hymn if you get bored during the rest of my sermon. <laughs> Together, we'll practice singing God's praises. From a secular standpoint, let's remember a quote from Elf that also helps remind us of what we're talking about today. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is, anybody know it? Singing loud for all to hear. <laughs> See, I know some of you watched Elf multiple times. <laughs> Rawl says in his material, it's hard to think about Christmas apart from music. Add sleigh bells to any song, and it's an instant Christmas classic. The Apostle Paul tells us that faith comes by hearing, and that's true. Music is an incredible way to communicate our theology, values, celebrations, and laments. And who could forget the line in that class classic Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life, that everyone quotes, every time a bell rings, how do we know when? When we hear the bell, right? It's a nice thought anyway, right? If not theologically appropriate. Our lives are filled with music and songs and sounds that have a huge impact on the way we perceive reality and how we communicate our faith and the hope we have, especially during this time of year, during Advent and Christmas. These sounds, musical or otherwise, keep us grounded and centered. And around this time of year, help us wait in expectant anticipation. Now, of the arrival of Jesus, in past history and in the coming future. This topic for the sermon this week has me thinking about my uncle Danny and Aunt Gail from years ago. My uncle Danny is still living, but my aunt passed away in 2014. But my memories of them are spending the holidays with the larger family when I was growing up, probably as a teen is what I remember. But they were unique in that they were both deaf. And being so appreciative of my own ability to hear and how important it's been to me, I often wondered how they got along without having that sense. But what I observed during these family gatherings is that they learned how to hear differently. The other senses have become experts in learning how to hear in special ways. And as it is for many deaf people, Sight is vitally important. They read lips and they sign. Their eyes are their ears. Like them, perhaps that's a skill we ought to learn. Not to read lips necessarily, but to hear in different ways. And I believe the challenge for us this Advent and Christmas as we go through this series at least today, is to hear the gospel in a new way. Last week, you were encouraged to see with eyes of faith. This week, we're encouraged to listen carefully to the words of scripture from long ago and make it real in our day, perhaps today, to hear the truth about God's chosen servant and then to respond to what we hear with sounds of praise of our own. Do you hear what I hear? Consider the Christmas hymns, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, or Angels We Have Heard on High. It's not just the familiarity of the tunes that speak to us and the melody that we can sing to God and to others. It's the theology, it's the words behind it. Come to Bethlehem and see Christ whose birth the angels sing. Gloria in excelsis Deo, or glory to God in the highest. And joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. 
with angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. These moments of song and praise give us a hopeful vision for the future and hold in them the promise of Christ's return. Again, I ask, do you hear what I hear? Another question. Have you ever thought about what sounds were present at Jesus' manger? First the cries of Mary in pain through childbirth, then quiet, unless away in a manger is incorrect and Jesus cries like any other baby. Maybe you could hear the rustling of the animals, perhaps the bleeding of a sheep. All sounds of one of the most special moments in history. Oddly enough, there isn't any music in the Christmas story, but the scripture says that the angels were praising and saying, not singing, they were saying, this is what the scripture says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven. When you look at your creche at home, or you look up at the one at the altar, and I don't know, I still don't know what the new, what the new piece is up there today. I haven't found it yet. But when you look at the creche, can you imagine what it must have sounded like? Not just looked like, but what it sounded like on that very special night. Maybe today is simply a call to use a different sense than just your sight to appreciate once again, and maybe even more this year, the story you already know so well. Listen carefully to the sounds around you. There are some that may be more comforting than you think. Above all, let the words of Scripture ring in your ears for a little while longer. The ones that tell of a chosen servant who would right wrongs, save God's people, and the one who is coming again. And by all means, in response, let somebody else, let the whole world hear your praise. Sing, even if you can't sing. I don't know why I just looked at the choir when I said that. <laughs> Make a joyful noise. I think we talked about this before. But be intentional about reaching God's ear with thanks, no matter what the sound. May the sounds of Christmas make your season brighter. May they help you to sing out God's praises for the amazing gift of Jesus.